Hello, Hugo. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, you need to turn your mic on and step away from the camera. You're too close. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, darling? Oh, this infernal human contraption. Yes, I can hear you. Can you stop calling me darling, please? Of course, darling. So how can I uh, help you? Well, let's do a show together, like the videos you do with Mark. Look, I told you, Mark has a ton of experience. You simply don't know enough about watches. But I'm a celebrity, darling. Everything we do is utterly fascinating. Um, and anyone who's anyone has seen Jurassic Park. Listen, I've told you before, you're much more useful using your fame um, to, to promote the channel and, and get likes from, you know, get your friends like Vader and um, Don Coglione to, to click like on the videos, okay? Oh, but that's so beneath me. I studied Shakespeare, don't you know? I will promise to keep you in supply of champagne and um, goats and Fortnum's hampers as much as I can. A goat, a goat, my kingdom for a goat. Very droll, yeah. Well, I must dash, unfortunately. Tonight is date night with tiddlywinks, triceratops, and I simply must do some body maintenance. Uh, how does that even work? You know what? I don't want to know. Toodle pip. Okay, ciao, ciao, ciao. Now, how on earth do you turn this bloody thing off? Oh, look, I'm a bunny rabbit. Uh, what's going on? Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And once again, I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Mark from Long Island Watch. How are you, sir? I am doing very well, considering, I guess, circumstances. How are you? Good. Now, last month we did, my oh God, it's, it's already been, been a month. I can't believe it's been a month. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was September. Yeah, nuts. I opened it to the floor, should, should we say, to, to, the, to, to the good gentry. Uh, what would they like to see us cover? And yes. a few of you, and I'll give a shout out to everybody that uh, nominated this, was our favorite Seikos. Very exciting. Yeah, we got to do it, right? Of course, of course. I, I know a lot of them. <laughs> oh, and before I, uh, we get into this, I should say, guys, do subscribe to Mark's channel. I will leave the link down below. Uh, especially check out the watch and learn series i think it's all the stuff that i can't be bothered to do because it's too technical <laughs> so, <laughs> but no it's it's absolutely outstanding and and um, if you're not familiar with mark or his channel please subscribe uh and a little introduction i mean you you, you must know mark by now but he comes from an engineering background so he's you're definitely more proficient and more um adept than me at explaining the technical stuff uh which yeah you know left I, and right still bewilders me so it's, sure port it's and starboard perfect. yeah <laughs> port and stuff <laughs> oh god so you've selected five i selected five right and i've you, selected you five. selected five was this difficult for you <sighs> yes i'll say yes and no because right. i could roll off 10 easily. easy right yeah but then i wanted to figure out how what my rationale was and I actually have my rationale for all five and why I chose them and why others I guess didn't make there uh, there's m way more than 10 right yeah I mean, yeah great Seiko's is at least a hundred I mean Seiko has a whole lineage of dive watches dating back from the first one um, but I wanted my own spin on why I chose the Okay, so I have a bandage on my thumb. I was about to ask how I... <laughs> I should have... <laughs> I, maybe I, I did a, a little quick post on YouTube and I sent it in one yeah. of my videos. Uh, two weeks ago, I was making apple pie with my daughter and I s got seven stitches in my thumb. Um, so I'm getting better. Uh, it's just Good. I gotta keep it wrapped up. But that's Good. why I look like I'm, <laughs> I'm sewing. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, I, I, I picked my five, but I have my own rationale and reasoning and... You know, I guess I'll give you my reasoning now. I wanted five that resonated 
that I thought held something special. And for me, being, I was born in the 70s, but I really didn't get into watches until then, probably really the late 80s, 90s. Mm. You know, most of my watches are what I'll call, you know, current day watches. You know, I'm mm. not going to pick a 6309, even though that's like, you know, the turtle of all time. Um, but that watch doesn't mean anything to me. Um, right. So I picked watches that more from my time. And, and one historical piece I thought was just really cool. But I picked them for engineering. I picked them for personal reasons. So yeah. I, I guess we all have our own reasons. How about you? Yeah, I, you know what? I think I came to loosely the same conclusion. Uh, there are some that I own that I just can't, cannot leave out. Right. But I think it, three of, well, no, two or three of my five are more and I don't own all of them are, are mm -hmm. more about the same kind of their significance and right. their meaning and what they represent so right yeah uh, we have to do wristwatch check before oh, we completely I, you know forget. I can't believe I almost forgot so, yeah I'll go for it. so I'm wearing well I'll show you I'm yeah. wearing a Zin uh, 757 Ooh. UTC chrono I wanted nice. to break this out only because it's been in the watch box for a while and I thought your viewers might appreciate it. It's a yeah. honking watch. I do have the bracelet for it as well, but right now it's on the rubber. Uh, great watch. And then I am wearing a Seiko, I'll show you. It's the Passage. Presage Cocktail Time Power Reserve. Oh, lovely. And My uh, God. not you one could... of the watches I picked. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you I couldn't like it. get more um, drastically different watches than each oh, other. I, yeah, no, no, definitely not. You know, uh, dressing up for a wedding. Yeah. Dressing up to go kick someone's butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, do you want to go first? Well, bro, you're right. Oh, yeah. Dressed. Sorry. Jesus. Come yeah. On, um, Casio F91. What? The, you can't get more the gray. simple than that. Yeah. I, I, I matched it to the gray pipe. That works. In, in my tracksuit. There we go. I'm wearing gray, too, but my shirt has Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck on it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been really uh, on the t-shirt, the t-shirt the, the game. Oh yeah. yeah, that's it's my it's my life. It's it's my yeah, life. Next month you should bring out some a different t-shirt every episode. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. There you go. There you go. Classic. <laughs> Lovely. Right. <laughs> Why don't you go first? Go on. Yeah, how do you want to do it? No, I'm just going to do it. It's just 5. It's just 5. No it's importance. Just five. Is yours importance? Kind of, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I should have so emailed you. So if, if yours is going to be of importance, then I'm going to yeah. go in importance too. All right. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, the first one I'll do would be the Little Military SNK 809 uh, nice. K2. That's the 37 millimeter day date with the 7S26 sandblasted case nylon strap. I own it in the green. Um, and so that's the watch. Uh, and then why did I select it? Well, I feel this was the number one value that Seiko came out with within the last, say, 20 years. And that's kind mm -hmm. of when the fives came out, uh, these fives, around 20 years ago. Um, so you're getting the same movement that was in SKX. Um, you're getting a excellent, excellent case size. You get great loom. Mm. You get so much stuff. And it was, back then, it was, now they retail, if you can get them for close to 100 bucks. Back then they were like $65. So back then meaning five years ago or so. Yeah. Uh, so I just think that this was just a, it was the gateway drug for Seiko. Oh, um, absolutely. If you didn't own a Seiko yet, this was the best thing to get you into it. But it wasn't a cheap watch, it was just an inexpensive watch. Um, and I felt like it checked so many boxes. So many people, it was small, it was versatile, it's a, like, almost like a B-dial Flieger, sandblasted mm -hmm. cage, which you don't, which you don't see, um, and a really cool um, nylon and leather strap, uh, and then I'm saying the black one, but it spawned four colors. You could do khaki, like a, like a tannish. You could do um, blue, you could do green, or you could do the black. And then they threw some of them on bracelets. Uh, so I think it's a great way to start, uh, you know, so start the countdown and to Absolutely. start you into the hobby of doing what we do. Yeah, it's one of those watches that's like, you can, it's a gateway drug. I'm so glad you mentioned that because it is. But also, if you're if you are a collector, I, I'd quite happily. I, I have one somewhere that I use mm -hmm. for videos occasionally. I don't really consider it part of my collection, okay. but it's just so affordable. It's like why not, you know? And, and it was it was crazy. The price of the watch is only maybe double the price of what the movement is. Mm. So right, it, right, it, right. it's crazy to consider. I mean, the sticker on the box when we used to get them, you know, authorized was like one eighty five, one ninety five. 
but in, in the market they were going, there was a time Amazon had them for like fifty-five dollars. Yes, um, yes, which is just totally. That's when I bought mine. Yeah, which is, when you think about fifty-five dollars, I can I can't even get like a Timex quartz based watch, and here I'm getting an automatic. I mean that's yeah. no brainer. That's the magic of Seiko, isn't it? Uh, that certainly is. Yeah. yeah, it's the magic of mass production, which they've right? absolutely pioneered on yes. all levels. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, all, all the Japanese companies. So, has it been discontinued? <sighs> oh, that's it's another one a, of those. It's such a weird question. So, yeah. uh, and I think I might have covered this in the last video. The 7S 26 is definitely a sunsetted movement. Yeah. Um, I like how you said that. That's very poetic. In the manufacturing field, you, when you stop a product, first you have to sunset it. So, the sun's going down on it. So, I don't think they're making those movements anymore. But mm. before they stop, I don't think they are. Because like SKX, they still get in, have 2019 serial numbers on them. Um, mm. But I imagine when they stop making those movements, they may have had half a million or a million sitting in inventory still. So those movements, got to be they're going to be turned into watches. Because through Seiko USA, I'm still getting SNKM 97s, which is a Recraft watch. And the Recraft watches still use 7S26. So I think they're still making watches. But... I, I gotta believe that the party is gonna end soon. Yeah. It would be awesome if they just made it a 4R36 based watch. That would just be like... Oh my god, yes. That would be yeah. a winner winner. I guess the question is more, uh, what does discontinuation mean? Is it when they stop manufacturing or is it, is it when they stop selling? Right. Discontin when people hear discontinuation, they assume that they can't get it anymore. But right. really discontinued, when you're making so many things, discontinued means well, we're not making it anymore. But it doesn't mean we don't have half a million in inventory. Right. Right. We're no longer manufacturing. But So that's mm. kind of my take on it. I was able to get uh, 809s not long ago again. And like I said, the price now is closer to like 90, 95 bucks. But I was able to get 809s recently and some of the other colors. So I got to believe that they're kind of still floating around. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Well, great pick, really okay. great pick. What do yeah. you got? Um, number five, the, well, you couldn't get more further from, from a mechanical watch because it's, it's actually in this book. Um, and I got a... Uh, I, it's in my Amazon store, but you you can't buy this book because it's it's become like I think it's out of print and oh. the price has gone discontinued. Completely. Discontinued. There we go. <laughs> yeah, um, it's the the Seiko TV watch. Can ah, you see that? Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, it's so cool. Exactly, and I, I remember seeing this for the first time in in James Bond in Octopussy, and of course he was using it to to, it, to kind of perv on some girl, right? Yeah, of course. Um, rest in peace, Roger Moore. But um, it heralded a new dawn for Seiko. Uh, at the time, you know, the, the the technology was moving so quick that miniaturization of parts yeah, and sure, it is a bit dis uh, disingenuous because yeah, it's got like a whole yeah, you, set of equipment with it, right? Really, 007. Look, I haven't time for these adolescent antics. Yeah, you have to have this thing plugged in. So it's not, you know, in your pocket and it's not, you know. We take it for granted, I mean, the technology we get on our wrist today. Um, so this came out, when was it? 1982. Mm -hmm. Now, I was considering adding the, um, uh, the, U, the UC2000 from, uh, I think it was 84, which is the, the wrist computer. It's like a... It's like a watch that then plugs into a keyboard, right? Okay. Did you ever see that? No. It's crazy. It's a crazy what watch. Was it, and what could it do? Uh, you could store information like um, like um, addresses, this kind of thing. Uh, it's like, like, four, like, like, like four lines. Yeah, <laughs> that four it ran lines. Out of memory. Right. <laughs> but it could, but you could carry that information on the wrist. Got it. Without the keyboard, you'd have to gotcha. plug in the keyboard to input the data. Got it. But but you know this was a whole new era of seiko and it will kind of get into what we're another watch i don't want to give spoilers away that I'm me too actually later. i'm glad you're doing that i just think it's so cool and 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 i remember as a child you know because smart watches obviously didn't exist computers right. were huge things that you, you know you'd have to wait half an hour for it to boot up and it was just in the corner of the room and it was very very rudimentary but seeing this and even though the the, the screen wasn't that great right. It just got me excited as a kid about the future. Right. Uh, and like, look and, at all this possibility. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I kind of from my early, no, late childhood, but even in my early childhood, 
you know, we saw characters like Dick Tracy talking yeah, into his watch exactly, and this yeah. kind of thing. We'd always wished for that. And then later, right. when I was, I think, about 10 or 11, I saw James Bond, which actually wasn't really appropriate for my age. But the point is, is that then it was like, oh, my God, this is going to be a reality one day. Right, right. You know? Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I had in high school, I remember, I don't know what the brand was, but they came out, a watch came out with a remote control on it. To control your TV. Yes, yes. Because we're so lazy. I mean, that was Casio, was it? Laziest. It might have been. A, you, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember, but I remember sitting in the cafeteria and they had a TV and I would and it would have like a search code function. I would just like boop boop. Yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. worked. And I was like, this is so cool. So kind of like the same thing with the TV. Now you yeah. have no remote control. You, were, you weren't the bad kid at school that was changing the channel. Me, when I well, I tried it once. I'm right. not, I was <laughs> not a bad kid, if you know me. Absolutely. I wasn't the bad kid, but I sat with the bad kids. So it was oh, like, okay. yeah. So we would just be <laughs> laughing because you know they'd they'd put a documentary on and then they'd change the channel. So and and you'd watch the teacher. They couldn't figure out what was going why on. It was happening. Yeah, <laughs> us, us sneaky kids with our cool technology. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, um, your turn. Back to me. Okay, I'm yeah. going to go. So now I'm going to go vintage. Nice. Uh, my only vintage pick. I'm going. Oh, with interesting. The, yeah, I'm going with the Pogue, which is the 6139. Uh, it is 6138, uh, It is known as the Pogue because some guy took it up to space with him in the 70s. Right. Um, uh, Colonel William Pogue, uh, I think it was. Uh, Commander William, I don't know. But it's named, so the watch is kind of, as you know, Seiko doesn't name their watches, yeah. but people call it the Pogue. Um, they say he wasn't authorized to carry it, which is BS, because you can't carry anything onto, you know, into space that you're not authorized to carry. But it might not, it might not have been, you know, he had his, his flight authorized watch on his other wrist. Anyway, so I dig the Pogue, because first of all, it's, well, the watch is from the 70s, mm. and we've got an awesome chronograph. It's a chronograph mover from Seiko. Um, and it's got this beautiful golden orange yellow dial. Mm. Okay, a 30 minute chronograph has an external tachometer and then an internal rotating bezel. Uh, the internal bezel you actually actuate with the crown. Oh, yeah, I remember. I reviewed one. So yeah. the watch has three buttons. I'm assuming, obviously, you're going to put pictures up. Yeah. I don't have one yeah, here. Yeah. Um, you know, the watch has, you know, start, stop, reset on the chrono. And then in the middle is the crown. The crown is flush with the watch. So in the flush position, you can spin it with your finger and the rotating bezel inside moves. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can time more than 30 minutes if you wanted to. Uh, but then you push it in and you can, like, change the day and the date. And you can pull it out to change the time. Um, so that's, like... That's like so cool that they integrated the function of the watch into the crown. Yeah. So nifty. And then yeah. obviously start, stop, reset on the dial. Um, and I just felt like this is just such a, a cool pick, a cool vintage vibe. Um, it's actually a watch that one, I, I kind of seek them out every now and again. They're very difficult to find in good condition, you know, for a good price. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot of redials of them. That's the problem. Yeah. A lot of them become redialed or... Something is swapped out on the inside. It becomes a Franken watch, which I'm not really looking for. But in good condition, there I think they're about a thousand bucks or so. Mm. Um, and so, to me, that's my vintage pick because I feel like uh, just so cool and such a great story behind it yeah. that it's actually named after <laughs> an astronaut. Uh, and again, that Se Seiko doesn't name him; we name him. You know, we thought to name uh, this watch from this guy. Uh, that is my that's my Pogue pick. Very nice. Well, it was uh, now correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't that the same movement that they were rushing to compete with the Swiss to be the with the others for uh, the yes, first automatic chronograph? Yeah, because chronograph movements are you know you can look and look, look at today. I mean, so Seiko was making chronograph movements. This is in the 70s. Mm. How many chronograph movements do they make today? They make the NE88, right? Mm. And that's kind of about it. There's um, automatic chronos are just so difficult to come by. Um, so I, I know we think that we're so advanced, you know, technologically, you know, digitally, you know, we're, we're very advanced. Mm. But when you get down to the miniaturization level, to think about in the 70s, they were able to, all the technology they could do to make this little miniature operating, and by no means the first one in history, of course, um, but this little miniature operating chronograph, uh, mm. I just think that every time I look at a chronograph, I'm like, wow, I can't believe yeah. all the moving parts that are in there. But they did, a, you know, the 70s is now 
like 45 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so it's so amazing that they could do this stuff back then. And, you know, and even today, like I said, they're not, not doing it in mass. There's not a load of Seiko chronographs out there at all because now they're really expensive. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Right. Well, um, and this was difficult. I wanted to include a diver. I was thinking, oh, I'll put the SKX, and then I was like, no, that's too easy. And then I, Mark might do it. Yeah, Mark, Mark might do it. And then, <laughs> the, then I was thinking Munster because it's just so different. It's, it's, Mark might do it. Mark might do it, yeah. <laughs> quite, quite a ballsy watch as well. Uh, but then I remembered the, um, the 55, uh, 55 year anniversary kind of reissue that they released this year. They did that trilogy. The, 62 mass which is going to be my pick yes okay so how do i explain this well first of all i have to have a diver in there because i think yeah even though seika was a little bit late to the game uh, they did catch up so quickly but with innovating mm -hmm. with you know the the tuna and these deep deep saturation diving watches sure. and the technology mm -hmm. and the arnie with the first annie digi alarm in a diver blah 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 all yeah the, cool all these yep. great achievements uh, but I really like the SLA 037J1. Nice watch. Um, and I reviewed it. The bone of contention with just about everybody was they're not going to pay six and a half. Well, actually, it's, I was going to say the price. Yeah, it's, it's five and a half <laughs> grand, right? Right. Okay. But I don't think people realize that it's made out of this special steel alloy that has never been used in a watch before it's it had only been used in super deep diving equipment uh -huh. and seiko would have had to uh, re, you know tested it researched it developed it customized all the machinery to cut and manufacture this new steel which behaves differently all this stuff people don't understand that the process and then of course it's a limited edition you've got a beautiful decorated in-house movement it's of the higher yeah. end and this amazing mm -hmm. resplendent dial i think the the design of it is perfect the, the proportions 39 millimeter blah 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 premium materials bezel all of it right there was no expense spared yes so that's why it costs five and a half that six much money grand. Yeah. that's if you want to sure. do something in-house to that level and Again, the gift and the curse of being Seiko. It's like, right? Oh, uh, I'm not paying that much for a Seiko, but that's they. Well, that's that's yeah. how much a watch like of that caliber is is. Right, you slap a Swiss name on it. It's ten grand. Yeah, yeah. If that was a blanc pan, it's ten, fifteen, twenty. You know, right? If it was a Rolex, God knows it would. Well, you wouldn't be able to buy it. So because <laughs> <laughs> it's steel, yeah. so you can't get those. Yeah. <laughs> So I just think they they knocked it out of the park and uh, and you know just forget about the price just look at it as a as a a statement of we make serious dive watches right you know here is some innovation just slipped in the back door nobody you know right you know sometimes innovation comes in the form of complications or the movements or the mastery of decoration sure. with hor horology right. well it spawned even from seiko it spawned a lot of lower cost versions yeah right yes yeah, right yeah. they made other ones that yeah we're going to make them out of regular 316l and you know they cut the price way down but those original ones I mean, people complain about the price but they're gone oh yeah I mean, there's collectors snap them up, you know, look at his split. Yeah, the one I reviewed had already been sold. It was only because the person, very generous, and shout out to that person, uh, was, was you know, generous enough. Oh, please, yeah. To, to loan it yeah, to you, yeah. you know. Sure. So I felt quite lucky. But anyway, um, I hope that will satisfy the, the diving, Seiko diving ardent supporters there. So, yeah. Was that your only diver? Well, I guess. Um, I'm say. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about you? Okay. What's next? I might have a couple more. So let's see. I'm up to number three now. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Where should I go with it? I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna go to the one you you already mentioned. I'm gonna go to the monster. Nice. I'm gonna go to the original monster. And again, I, everyone has their reasons for picking what they think the best are. Um, this watch obviously is was around, you know, when I was you know heavy in the game when I was actually kind of first starting out. Um, but I picked the first gen. I think pick any monster. But I'm gonna be picking the first gens, the SKX seven seven nine seven eighty one, uh, simply because I felt that this was taking a dive watch and just Seiko just said we're just gonna make it look so different. Mm. We're gonna make it look aggressive, make it look like a monster. You know, the, again, Seiko doesn't call it a monster, we do, the, the teeth and everything yeah. else. And I just felt like, 
Uh, again, we all have our own reasons uh, for picking things. Oh, the monster, whatever. It's so, you know, so pedestrian. Uh, but I feel like here they took dive watches, dive watches, dive watches. You know, all the dive watches look the same. Every dive watch out there, you know, tried to copy a Rolex. Yeah. And now here, we have a totally different design. Um, the bezel is cool with all the facets on it. The case has the edging that comes up around it. Um, the bracelet was even nifty and different with polished and links and all this other stuff. Uh, a brilliant orange dial, a beautiful black dial, loom up the yin yang. I mean, crazy how much loom those things have. Right, yeah. Uh, and of course they ISO certify it, uh, to be a true diver that people can really use diving. Um, so I feel, hey, this watch, you know, Seiko said, we're here, we're going to make something with personality, which generally... I would say you don't always think of personality with Seiko. Yeah. The new Seiko 5s, the, the, the divers, the 5KX, yeah, personality. But you know, over time, dive watches all kind of follow a similar DNA and they'll look the same. Mm. Uh, and I think this guy just hits it out of the park. Here's come something totally different. And it spawned, obviously, Gen. It was good enough for them that from it went from Gen 1. Uh, to Gen 2 with the 4R36, that was the mod, that was now we have the, the monster teeth, teeth yeah. as the indices, SRP 307, 309, 311, 313, and 315, uh, and then Gen 3, then Gen 4, and now, finally, the USA got in the game a few years ago, and they came out with their own versions, um, SRP D25, 27, they went with the candy bar over the day date, which uh, yeah. I'm not really a fan of, yeah. but still, I just think that they kind of launched a whole new line of watches that has now lived for monster came out in like 2001 or two. Oh, really? Wow. They've spawned a line that's been around now for almost 20 years. Uh, and the case and style of it remains almost unchanged. Yeah. Yeah. To this day, uh, size hasn't changed. Uh, the main appearance of the dial hasn't changed. It's they've made another, they made an icon basically. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. started an icon uh, and and it continues it continues to be one yeah and it's uh, I'm so glad you mentioned that because it's it's so sometimes and I think we'll get into this with 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 one of the watches I'm going to talk about later Seiko tends to be some of the especially the vintage stuff uh, tends to be very safe and very kind of conservative and then you have this exactly exactly it, and this was this was a wild change don't forget now this is 20 years ago. Mm. It sounds like, you know, 2000, all oh, that was yesterday. No, it wasn't. It was two, it was two decades ago. Wow. And they had this notion to do something, you know, just totally you know, kind of different. Absolutely. And and it's a serious, serious dive watch, too. It's a real, it's ISO certified. It's It's got the, it's got all the credentials. People really use them. Nice. Um, I mean, do we really use them diving? I mean, most people that dive don't really use watches, but still. Yeah. It can <laughs> if it needs to be. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, I'm going to follow that up with a similar. This watch is similar to the the, the Munster because it it's divisive. It's like okay. people, uh, you know, people yeah. that love the Munster love it. Sure. Or you yeah. just or they hate yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, a, a what I do. You you have Marmite in in America, right? What's that? Marmite. Marmite, like the yeah. word. Yeah, Marmite. You know the 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 spread you put on toast. Is it like marmalade? <laughs> no, it's... You, uh, right, it's a British thing. Um, what is it? Marmite lover or hater? I hate it. I hate marmite. You love it. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can keep your jam. I'll take it with me. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I use this expression, it has a Marmite effect, because some okay. people like it, some people, and some people hate it. Yeah. So okay. I'm not into Marmite, but I have friends who swear by it. Anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah, food chat on the Urban Gentry. Head cheese. So some <laughs> yeah. people love head cheese, some people hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with the, the Seiko Ripley, the uh, designed by yep. uh, Giorgiotto Giugiaro. I hope I haven't butch, butched that. Even for somebody who, who spoke Italian before they spoke English, it's it's a, it's difficult. But and I, it's again, it's in the the fifty most uh, was ah. it, 50 watches that changed the world. There we go. This is the original. That's the original. Yeah, which came out in nineteen eighty six. I've just recently uh, bought the the PVD version. This is the the re release. Not sure if you can see that. 
hold it right up to the camera. No, thank you. <laughs> no, ah, there you go, there you go. So this is just such a crazy design, but in in reading about this and and going into the history, a bit like the monster, it was this very kind of ballsy, uh, risky move. The original caliber that's in the the, the very first one was the seven A twenty eight, which is made history for nineteen eighty three by being the first quartz chronograph. Mm -hmm. Now we definitely take these things for granted, but by being quartz, it suddenly was gave the designer of the watch a little bit more freedom oh absolutely yeah so, and they and seiko approached uh ital design which is a, a de, an industrial design company mm -hmm. founded by Giugiaro and another chap whose name uh evades me right now but basically redesign the watch into something kind of sporty and racing because obviously he was a car designer so now, and, and I really should explain the distinction between industrial designer and, and, and somebody who makes, who designs watches because they approach it from a more aesthetic, but also in terms of ergonomics and uh, in terms of from the user's perspective and making it efficient. So you see where I'm going with this. Yeah, so, I was saying it's outside in as opposed to inside out. Exactly, exactly. So not so much on the engineering because now we finally had quartz movements right. which gave the, the design a little bit more freedom so they came up with this uh well there were four designs there were two digital two analog that seiko hired them for this was one of the four designs with this asymmetrical weird thing but if you wear it and you use it as a chronograph you know imagine i mean we're, we're talking very functional a, yeah we're talking a a pre pre smartwatch age so this was this would have been cutting edge technology your your hand is on the steering wheel you haven't really got time and you just it's very easy it's intuitive. for a racing car driver you know yes the other thing is one of the designs had a, a face that was at an angle so you could read it uh, yeah you know, driving you know, watches yeah very very cool stuff and then of course james cameron who is a big seiko holic he was he wore the arnie actually he's one of the, the oh. early arnie fans mm -hmm. he got hired to do the uh, the sequel to alien aliens right. and you know he's a he's a absolute stickler for attention to detail he oversees everything so it's it's not a coincidence it's it's it was you know, there's Seikos throughout that film, all designed right. by Giugiaro because it has this kind of industrial futuristic look, which is perfect for a science right. fiction movie. So it's got the three things that make a watch iconic. Innovative, sorry, I almost saw <laughs> it. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Do it this way around. Innovative, uh, innovative technology, uh, cutting edge design, and then it's got movie stardom. Right. Now, do you wear it often? No, I, I no. <laughs> you have to wear the right clothes. If when you do wear it, do, do, do people yes. say anything to you? Like, what the yeah. hell is that? <laughs> or do the they know what is. it is? Which one is it? <laughs> right, like, what uh, the hell Yeah, is they it? do. They, they uh, watch people get, you know, get excited. Because they get it. You, yeah, you, sure know, know, you know what it is, what it is from way. But um, uh, I was about to say civilians, non-watch people. Yeah. <laughs> non -watch, civvies. Civvies. Non-watch people. Uh, genuinely take an interest and ask about it which is okay. great because you start a conversation i never get that with a submariner or, no. or even a speedmaster they're mm -hmm. so under the radar but yet this it's a great conversation piece and it's right. fun I, the only thing is you can't wear it with everything it looks ridiculous if you're trying to dress up you know um, <laughs> it would match your your motif today yeah yeah actually i'll put it on i might as well there you go see wearing a tracksuit casual yeah absolutely and and strangely, if you, uh, Ayrton Senna was a uh, wore um, one of the early, not this, not the Ripley, but he wore the, I think the one that was at an angle. Yeah, it would make sense because he's driving all the time. Yeah, in early in his career, and um, seeing pictures of him in the car wearing it, it just like it looks so cool. You know? Right, nifty. It's it, the original was one tenth of a second. Um, chronograph as well mm. so i mean really for racing when every split second counts right performed you know right oh and then cool. later actually spoilers i'll save it for later sorry i'll shut up now so, oh something's yeah. coming up later yeah yeah you know where this yeah you, you'll know this when it comes up yeah 
Okay, okay. Uh, is it my turn? Yes, yes. Oh, Sorry, I two. babbled on about no, this. No, no. It's my turn. Well, the last video was an hour and a half, apparently, once yeah. you finished editing it. So hopefully this one's quite a bit shorter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I put that up, I thought, oh, my God, no one's going to watch. Who's going to watch this? Do you know how many people this? have said to me I watched the whole thing from, you know, from yeah. beginning to end? And I'm like, <laughs> no, you didn't. I'm like, I sat through it. It was tough for me. <laughs> Yeah, it took, it took me about four days just to edit the, the That's damn crazy. thing. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, sorry. Eh, my number two, which way should I go? I'll go this way. So I'm going to go with um, Snowflake. Uh, Grand Seiko oh, Snowflake. Nice. Uh, nice. So I'll, doesn't matter, I don't care which one you do. It could be the SBGA011 or, or the 211, which is the more modern take on it. Um, but the Snowflake, if you don't know the Snowflake, okay. So uh, it is a titanium watch from the mines of Grand Seiko. Uh, 2016, 17, uh, spring drive watch. So I like the watch for two reasons. I like it for the dial and I like it for the spring drive. Uh, so I'll talk about both things because um, they're cool. Well, titanium is super light, but everyone makes titanium watches. So the dial. Uh, the inspiration for the dial came from, you know, the the story goes that the designers were looking out the window in Japan and the landscape around the Seiko buildings and the freshly fallen snow. So they wanted a dial that mimicked it. Mm. And damn, did, did they do it. It's a, uh, the way the dial is molded, it had them all mm. new processes just to get the dial right. I mean, they, they took them a long time to get the dial the way they wanted. When you look at the watch, it does appear the dial is white like snow. The dial is actually plated in silver, um, and it's just there's so many ridges and nooks and crannies. From nice, the, to use nice. the English muffin expression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys see the English muffins in England? Uh, y yes. Is Thomas yeah. is famous over there? Oh no, not really. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. I mean, really? uh, I'm more partial to scones. But <laughs> I can see those conversations going. Yeah, anyway. yeah. <laughs> Food chat part two on the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but the way they coated the dial in silver and they figured out so long, it took them to figure out what, what the co coating should be. When you look at the watch, the dial looks looks white. Yeah. And it's it's not even at all. It's like a fractal almost. You know, it's... Right, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what a fractal is? It's, you know, no matter how close you look at it, it's constantly changing. Or how far away from it you look at it, it's like constantly changing. Um, yeah. So they couple that with their super crazy AR that they put on the crystal. Crazy AR, like they're super duper, the best stuff that they have. Right. And when you look at the watch, it's like, oh, I'm gonna touch the hands. And you can't touch, it. there's a crystal there, but you can't tell. So I think the dial is awesome. Uh, and then number two, my love is spring drive. I love spring drive. You gave mm -hmm. me a plug for watch and learn before. Uh, yeah. I did a watch and learn a few years ago on spring drive because it fascinates me so much what goes on in spring Good. drive. People don't I'll, realize we'll it. Do, we'll do the thing where we Yeah, maybe give me a card or something. Yeah, the card. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> with spring drive, it's really cool to watch. When it, if it's dead, and you start it, when you wind it, the second hand flies for a mm. few seconds. It goes super fast before the whole mechanism kicks in to, um, to there's an electromotive break and all this other stuff. Mm. Uh, so it's accurate, spring drive is super smooth motion. Uh, Seiko says accurate, it's like 15 seconds a month. It's far, far, far better. Um, I'll do spring drive really quickly, but before I do, I think that Spring drive is just so interesting because it's a com it's a super duper complication where quartz works so much easier. Yeah. Right? I mean quartz is more accurate, it's so much simpler. I mean, why not just use quartz? But we as watch people like, ah, well we like our automatics that are not as accurate and that are far more complex. So to me, spring drive is super complex. Yeah. Super complex. I mean the guy that kind of brought spring drive to fruition. He kind of died before it ever saw production, but it's hundreds and hundreds of patents. It's decades of work that he started tinkering with this idea. Right. So I'll give you the two second lesson of spring drive. Yes, or my, please my do. Turn in, it might turn into two minutes. Okay, that's <laughs> By the way, fine. My, backup, my backup generator just flipped on. So basically it's like having a quartz thing inside that tells it how accurate it needs to be, but then it uses a mechanical system to, do the, to, to portray the time and to uh, function the entire watch. So it's like the perfect marriage between quartz and automatic. Uh, oh, it's just, to me, it's just so nifty. That's mental. It's yeah. so complicated. Yeah. 
fa male la testa, as we say in Italian. <laughs> it hurts my head. <laughs> it, it hurt my when I was doing the video. I remember I was like, oh, okay, I gotta get all, I gotta get all this right. Yeah, because uh, yeah. it hurt my head too. But super cool, uh, really exciting, great tech. So every spring drive to me is amazing. Mm. Um, but I like the snowflake because it incorporates the dial. I have to ask, I have to ask, because uh, last episode we were talking about the blower briefly. Is it is it smoother or so like the, preci- to- the, the the precisionist? Yeah, it's kind of the same. Thing. Yes, the yes. Right. second hand mine, on yeah. the grand say on the spring drive never stops. Same thing on the the precisionist kind of. I mean, I guess if you use like stop motion, the precisionist I guess is ticking is actually ticking, whereas. The Seiko is not. Mm. The Seiko is actually, without the electromagnetic brake, the second hand would just spin around uncontrollably. Right. Uh, the second, the 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 brake acts like the escapement in a mechanical watch. Um, so and it's constantly applying a little bit of magnetic field uh, to the glide wheel, I guess, to get it to slow down just enough to maintain good Got time. You. Yeah, Got but you. the precisionist, I think, is going to tick as well, is going to tick, whereas the spring drive is just going to it's nice and smooth. Wow. I'm glad you brought it up because I'm I'm a big fan of like Japanese art and my grandfather used to collect woodblock prints, you know, the very traditional Japanese prints. And something that is uh in fact actually behind the camera there's I have two Japanese vases and something that is inherent in all Japanese art. And I'm talking about traditional, I'm not talking about modern art is nature is always the biggest thing. So I have some vases, uh, uh, va- is, is vases? It, you can go vases or vases, whatever you want to do. Right, okay. Vases. I have uh, some vases, uh, vasi. <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> so I have some vases uh, uh, behind the camera and it's kind of festooned with, with uh, trees and foliage and birds. And then, then you have a little castle or a human figure and they're always small. In the hookah say wave, I got the pillow. Same over there. thing, you got the little people in the boat, but as exactly. nature is. Nature right. is always the most powerful. It's always, you know. And I like the fact that even Seiko put that into their watch. That's nature, you know, something that's. Exactly. That know. beautiful. Uh, it's so cool. If you don't know the snowflake, go check it out. I thought yeah. you were going to ask me if I own a spring drive, and I was actually prepared yeah. for this answer. I don't. Oh, okay. I was just. I, I don't know, maybe it's SRN 054 or 045. It just came out. It's not a grand. It's a mm. pro it's not a grand cycle. It's a prospects limited run. Uh, it's got a gradient dial. It's supposed to look like outer space. It goes from like the blue of the earth to the black of the sky if you were actually in space. So, so they put a spring drive in it? It they, they put a spring drive, yeah. Really? It, I thought it was beautiful. only for Grand Seiko. No, it's no, no. This is like their special Prospex LE edition. Right. And it, uh, you, you'll throw it up if you can. I think it's SRN 054 or 045. Right. If I'll you find, find it. I'll let you know. I'll let me okay. know. It's like 5,500 bucks. Probably all spoken for. I'm guessing. I saw an article come out on it. Yeah. And I just texted my rep, just in conversational, because my rep's a nice guy. I said, "Oh my goodness, I just saw this." And he goes, "Mark, he goes, I'm getting calls all day about it. So I'm sure they're gonna. I'm sure they're gone already." Uh, nice watch, nice. really nice looking. This kind of uh, segues nicely into the next watch for me, and it's the uh, the baby Grand Seiko. It's the sub ah. zero three. Did you pick I'm, one? A sub? Yeah. No, don't worry. Okay, good. I only got one left, and I, you right. probably know what it is already, so don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Um, I, you know, I'm not going to wheel off the, all the, the specifications because oh, I, sure. I think we all know it by now. Dare I say it has been discontinued now? Is that official? Oh, that's now? a def. That's, yeah. That's a 100 percent affirmative. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it's not really what the watch, uh, well, it is what it, it offers. But to me, what it represents was when I bought this and I initially bought it for myself and then migrated, I like to say, into my wife's collection, which just means that I could borrow it and wear it. But mm-hmm. anyway, when I started the channel, there was, there was, I had an SKX and I had the flighty and I had this, that, and I didn't have any expensive Seikos. Okay. I had never really, exp- I never experienced Grand Seiko, never mm-hmm. experienced. And then I ordered this watch from Japan. And you and this uh, back then you yep. weren't listing yeah, them. Yeah. Couldn't get Saabs, you couldn't get no. Alpinists, you couldn't get any of that stuff. Yeah. 
you know, I spent, I think it was like 300 bucks, 350 bucks. Jeez. And, and yeah, and uh, <laughs> there was this watch that was like, oh my God, it, they've signed the crown, they've, they've different steps on the polishing and, and you've got this beautiful, uh, great hacking movement and yeah. every, everything about the watch, with the exception of, um, actually the bracelet wasn't too bad too, punched way above its weight. Yeah, true. And then I was like, well, why can't we get this in America? That video went viral, everybody kind of jumped on it, they discovered it, and I, I yeah. think out of sheer demand, Seiko mm -hmm. must have finally realized, you know what, why don't we just, you know, not keep it for domestic and... and we, that watch never went domestic. Never went domestic? Never went domestic officially. Right. No, never did. Nope. They anything with a with an S A R B. Um, uh, oh, I can't even say S A R X anymore. A lot of those watches they never went domestic. What happened was maybe thanks to you, <laughs> <laughs> the popularity increased so much that they started making a ton of them, and then you know people like me were able to import them from overseas and bring them in. Right. Um, it got on Amazon and everything else. But no, the U S A never wisened up back then to yeah. bring to making a domestic watch but they definitely have now haven't they no it's not a it's, it's not a usa watch never was okay no S but but that we have seen the you, alpinist do usa yeah, models there you go only. that's so yeah yes yes absolutely so the sarb that sarb never did but the alpinist yeah the uh well the, the green the sarbo 17 again never mm. made us mm. um they but it's so popular they, here. It was popular for years. I was selling boatloads of them. The, the, uh, who did the? Can I say that word? <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. They did the. Fair they, enough. They did the blue. They did. <laughs> they did the blue one. And uh, dare yeah. I say that was the first one to hit the states. I'm pretty sure. And then they came out with the 2020 version. Um, there's four of them. And now they have the no compass versions. So it, I would say now Seiko in the USA is getting a lot smarter. It's waking up. Yeah, yeah, they're allowing me to carry Good. the Sark 057 now. Um, which but is, but may I, can I ask you this? Yeah. And and you know, it's I'm not trying to be controversial, but sure. that audience, uh, to me, I don't think it's the Seiko audience that I know. Which audience? Or that I inter I interact with. What, you know, what, the, the, the the most people that we. Uh, a lot of your customers, oh, yeah, oh, no. the we fans are not, of the show. We, I say this a lot. We, we're in a microcosm. You yeah. and I, and the half a million subs that you have watching, we are still in a microcosm. Um, if Seiko hasn't yeah. woken up and knocked on your door and said, "Please come to Japan. We want you to film," they're not. They're, you're not the market. There's, you know, however many billions of people in the world, yeah. however many of them are watch buyers. They're concentrating on all of that stuff. If they were concentrating on your people, the 5KX Diver would never be would never be released, mm. um, and that's a it's a smash hit for them, a big time hit. Uh, so yeah, they're not they're not talking to you and me. Uh, they may find a watch every now and again that resonates with you and me. Right. Um, I'd read an article. Uh, it was it was a book actually. It was a book about time. I, forgot, I read a lot of books about time. Nice. Uh, about precision, and some guy was talking about precision, and he went to uh, he's saying I went to a factory in Japan where they make the quartz movements for some for their lower cost watches the ones that are in macy's yeah, and stuff yeah 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 uh if macy's is still around i don't know if they're still around <laughs> but, <laughs> oh my god know, yeah but the machine makes 25 to thirty-five thousand movements a day mean yeah so think about that and that's the mo that's the cash cow yeah 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 not making you know, however many oh, so, yeah, SARBs right, they were making. Right, right, right. I, it's the cash grab. I grade. totally get it now. That explains yeah. it all. Yeah. Yeah. That's the money. When they would, you know, my rep would get, and I guess I'm segueing off of your thing. I no, it's fine. My no. rep would give me, you know, as a, as a USA retailer, they'd, they'd kind of tell me, hey, these are the top 10 models in the USA at the time. And I look at them and I go, oh. <laughs> Those are, those I'm are I'm going to do a replay like, of that in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at them and I go, oh. My customer won't buy them, but the Seiko customer does. Yeah. You know, the, 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 like again, the Macy's customer buys it. Fascinating. But absolutely. I love the Sarp. Yeah. Sarp's yeah, so, yeah I, we, I don't want to get away no, from your No, no, absolutely. No, <laughs> it, it's totally relevant because I think the Saab kind of woke me up to this other side of Seiko. Oh, okay. You know, all I knew Seiko for, and and part, oh, sorry, part of it was, let me just turn my phone off. Part of it was 
you know, because I was only really kind of starting out, I don't want to say my watch enthusiast kind of journey, but, it, you know, I hadn't learned about the, the Grand Seiko and the higher end stuff sure. because I was, you know, I was enjoying this, the SKX and the flighty and all of okay. that. And, and I was very content. I would, I didn't, but this completely changed my perception. And and it's it's like the, the SNK809 is the gateway drug to, like the affordable, this is the I gateway agree. to that next level of upper, Seiko. upper level yeah applied indices beautiful glossy yeah. dial nice size yeah and what i never answered what's with the needle seconds hand i mean it's it's really cool and beautiful but where did this come from where did the case the idea for the case i, I haven't seen this in any other watches right you know and, it's like where did this stuff come from and there's nothing anymore that uses that it's i yeah. don't know so, you know, it's just funny. We, we make fun of these companies or people make fun of these companies all the time. Like, oh, what were they thinking? What were they doing? This is, and then every so often you get something like, oh, this is really nice. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, but they have their own, you got to think about it. You know, the guy behind the computer or at the drafting table has his own constraints. You know, he knows they got to yeah. sell a million of them a year. Uh, he knows they got to make a certain amount of money. Uh, and especially in the mass production field, time is money. You know, we're going to cast it. We're going to machine it. What are we going to do? They have mm. all these constraints that are placed on them. You know, as an engineer, I, you know, we saw it, I saw it every day. You know, when you're designing from scratch, it's, you know, my, my boss had a saying. It was a great saying. When somebody would criticize a design in a design review, he would take a pencil out and say, this is what I started with. You you know, you start when you start from nothing. It's easy. Mm. You know, it's very difficult. It, it's easy to criticize or play you know, Monday morning quarterbacking. You know, yeah. so uh, <laughs> I, I give these guys a lot of credit. It's difficult. You know, to make it all right. So, what oh is God. your number oh, one? I'll be down to number one. Yeah, uh, I wonder what it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to say, it's 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 the SKX. Okay. Oh, you did. And, okay. Yeah. Right. And okay. I do again. I said I do everything for reasons. I have right. a reason. Um, I have two reasons, really. The SKX is very important to me as a retailer because I sold a ton of them. And it helped my business thrive. It helped me just keep going in life. It helped me leave my job to, you know, do Long Island Watch full-time, you know, at this point, eight, eight years, nine years ago, my God, nine wow. years ago. Um, there was a time a few years ago I was selling three, 4,000 SKXs a year. Uh, so a tremendous impact on my life. Okay. Wow. Uh, okay. So it's so important to me that that watch will always hold a special place in my heart. I own several of them, obviously. <laughs> um, so that's reason number one. Mm. I understand it doesn't hand wind and hack, blah, 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 blah. Reason number two, it's the last diver that Seiko will ever make that's not in the Prospects lineup. So, so the SKX came out in 1996. So we're looking mm -hmm. at almost 25 years. I, they're done now, right? So yeah, it, it, it lasted. Unless they imagine they pop out with a 25 year anniversary SKX. Would that be killer? Oh my god! <laughs> I, I imagine hope so. Yes, <laughs> that'll be next year. I don't. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we went through the, all this time. You know, Prospects was always around, professional specifications. It was always around. Uh, but starting like five or six years ago, every new diver that Seiko introduced was in Prospects. So this is the last watch that was not part of Prospects. So being not part of Prospects, the price was lower. I still get them today. They're getting expensive. I'll sell the rubber ones for like over 300 bucks now. It's crazy uh, because the supply is really diminished. Mm. Okay, so... Reason number one is important to me was it helped me support everything that I do. Reason number two is because uh, it's the last diver that's not a prospect. Reason number three, and I think this is even, this is the biggest thing. I, th I want to say that this is the watch that started the watch modding community as a whole. Right. Because this is the, and we would say when I was growing up, this is the Honda Civic of the watch modding community. Mm. Uh, there's so many parts available for it. Uh, watch modding, I'm sure, existed before the SKX came out, but this is the one that if you want to model watch, you go to a website to look for parts, whether it's mine or any of the other multitude of people, they're all selling SKX 007 parts. Mm. This is the platform to do it. You're getting into it, you want to try modding yourself, you buy an SKX because you want all the parts. All these places have the parts and you can just, you know, pick whatever you want. So, and, and I think watch modding, is the way of the future for many, many, many people. They love it. People can't buy their watch and not do anything to it, which is crazy. Uh, so those are the three reasons why I think it's the most important at Seiko in my life. My life. 
Not yours, maybe, but mine. Yeah. You know what? I feel bad because I said it was a predictable choice, but after it's a very predictable choice. But after hearing that, it's it's special because it's in, it's changed your life. It, cha- which is, it changed my life a hundred. But would I be where I am without it? I don't know. I, I don't know. But it, to me, it was such. It's such an icon. It's an icon for the Frankel family, <laughs> not only for you know, not only for Seiko and everyone else that owns a diver. There were divers before it, absolutely. Before you got into the business, did you appreciate the SKX, or, or, or were you not really? <sighs> Wasn't really in tune with it too much. I was kind of in tune with my own watches that I owned. You know, whether right. it be a Swatch, I had some Swatches. You know, my dad's my my dad's watches, Concords and Rolexes. Um, mm. You know, whatever else I'd carried on, some old quartz divers, Timexes, Casios, G-Shocks. Um, you know, when I got into the game around 2000, 2001, I started looking around like, wow, you know, what is this thing? And that's when, that's when it all started up for me, pretty much. Can, can you imagine that if you're getting into watches like a couple of years from now, you're not going to know what, well, you, you will know what an SKX is, but you won't have that. It will be the 6309 of the 70s and 80s, which is the which is the old turtle, which we don't see much. A lot of your viewers probably have one on their wrist, but me as uh, you know a child of the 70s, I'll probably never see one. I'll never you know I didn't. They weren't in stores pretty much for me. So yeah, it's it it's a chapter, and yeah. the chapter the chapter is closing on it. But uh, it was such an important part of my life that I figured it deserved it deserved top marks. Nice, nice. Well, is it? Uh, it's a beautiful, poetic number one for you. Um, well, go ahead. I'm ready. Hit me hard. Well, this is predictable. You, you, do I even have to say it? Come on. You know it. Oh, nice. You know Nice. <laughs> Very nice. The Flighty is, for me, the watch that reawakened my love of, of uh, not just Seiko, but watches. Okay. And then recently, in the last few years, I've become more appreciative of it because I understood two things about Seiko that I didn't didn't take on board. The what we mentioned earlier about the, uh, the they're making the first quartz chronographs, right? Which this the, this uh, movement is far more advanced, but it's a it, uh, it's a modern descendant of that of those of the eighties uh, right. yep. quartz, you know, the first ones. But secondly, because I, um, and this kind of goes back to the, the 809 that we talked about earlier, I didn't realize that um, Seiko is so underrated when it comes to making aviation watches. If, if, if you think of pilot watches, you think of yep. Fliegers. You think don't think of, of Seiko. Yeah, you don't think of Seiko, but yet they made uh, watches for the Japanese Air Force in World mm. War II, the, 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 the infamous kamikaze watches, which is kind of mm. crazy in itself, a watch that you know you're going to Yeah, destroy. You die, you're going to die with. <laughs> yeah, which is completely like... And it's, of course, they do it accurate. And, I know, you know, it's not like it needs like a 10-year life. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, and, of course, that's why not many of them have survived today, <laughs> but <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Um, and then, of course... When the British, the Ministry of Defence, wanted to equip their pilots in the 90s, well, late 80s, they picked Seiko, Mm -hmm. which is is a very typical British move because it's like, well, what's the most cost-effective, most accurate, most dependable? It Ah. doesn't make a difference where it comes from, yeah. So they went with with uh, the same Seiko chronograph, which was the one that Bond, you know, well, not the same watch, but it was a a matte dial, Mm -hmm. very plain kind of, tooltastic version of what Bond wore in the movie right. and so you have all these connections and it's so accessible and still relatively affordable and I just think that this version and I've owned the Flightmaster after this okay. and the one that preceded it and it doesn't have the same magic okay it doesn't have the same feeling I nearly put the SKX in because it's um you know it's it's a robust relatively reliable you know mm-hmm. a true sure. professional diving watch and all the rest of it but yet this has 200 meters water resistance screw down buttons screw down button the chronograph the date alarm alarm, alarm. S- yep. second time zone 21 millimeter lugs yeah which still annoy me but <laughs> oh well. um yeah it's not perfect it is not perfect the, the, it has the shortest little lugs of all time good video yeah. by the way what 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 we hate about some of our favorite watches 
Yes, we're going to do that. Put that away. Yeah, <laughs> Go yeah ahead, we're going to do that. Yeah, actually, that reminds us. Um, guys, pet peeves. Should we we want to hear yours in the comments. And also your favorite Seikos as well. So, yeah, put favorite Seiko and most annoying thing about watches. What annoys you most in the comments, please. Um, yeah, so it's it's my number one and, and it's kind of a boring choice. But How long have you owned that? I've owned flight flighties for for uh, must be approaching a decade now but wow. this particular one yeah. since the beginning of the channel oh that's great because i i sold them and then i missed right. them bought them back started yeah <laughs> started the channel um so yeah this is not going anywhere it's just i just look at it and it just reminds me of i don't know so many adventures yeah, anyway. it's good it's good anyway. it tells, tells a story yeah there we go yeah so uh, thank you for staying tuned for five hours with us. Uh, Has it been that long? No. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Mark, for joining us again. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and I should say, Mark has very generously sponsored today's video. So uh, it could not be made possible without Mark. So do check out his channel. I will leave all the links, all of that good stuff down below. Next month, we're going to cover, uh, it, well, it'll be lead up to Christmas. We'll do pet peeves, right? Sure. Uh, yeah so guys don't forget to add yours in the comments and your favorite seikos thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it found it useful and we will catch you in the next one okay ciao